Welcome everyone to the Business Central New Features session that we have Olister Ramau that is going to present this to us today from Cloud Fronts. Welcome Olister, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Lori. Uh, hello everyone, I am Olister Ramau. Uh, I'm from uh, Mumbai uh, working in Cloud Fronts Technologies. Uh, first of all, I'm Thank you every one of you uh, for joining this webinar and attending it. Uh, three points to, uh, for the note is the links to the presentation and the recordings will be provided by Laurie. Uh, any questions and queries, you can raise your hand just as Laurie said, and I will answer them at the end of the uh, webinar. And for any more questions and concerns, you can email me at orumao at the rate cloudfriends.com, which is O-R-U-M-A-O -O at the rate cloudfriends.com. All right, so let's get started. So this is my introduction. I'm a business central uh, technofunctional consultant at uh, Cloudfriends Technologies. Okay, let's get started. So first important feature here is the field size for the masters. Uh, in Business Center, it was released earlier. The field size were uh, 50 characters. Now, uh, in the April release, the characters, the size of the characters has changed to uh, 100 characters. So, uh, as you can see in this name uh, box here, I could fill up to Techno Service. Uh, after the Business Center release, I can uh, put more information into the system. Then we have is a system information page. So earlier we did not have application version as a field and now we have. So uh, this is the same application version which we refer to in the Visual Studio code uh, during development of the app. Uh, this is a cool feature which is uh, accelerating data entry through quick entry. So basically what it is, uh, so when you are doing an entry uh, and you hit the enter, uh, the field which has been selected for quick entry, your cursor will directly move to that field uh, and skipping the editables field in between. If in case you want to move to the next sequential editable fields, you'll have to hit tab. So let me just show you how it works. Uh, in this case, I'll be adding description uh, to the quick entry. So from the designing pane, you can just include it into the quick entry. Uh, so before adding it to the quick entry, so from uh, cross-reference number, once I hit enter, the cursor would move to quantity. Uh, but after I uh, add it into quick entry, it will be moving to descriptions. Uh, one more cool feature here is uh, GL accounts and where we can see all the GL accounts in the posting setups. Uh, earlier, this feature wasn't available and in order to see the GL accounts, we had to manually go, go through the table and uh, make them visible or uh, write an extension to uh, populate them on the page. So uh, in this feature, you have a small uh, show all accounts button on the every posting group setup page. Uh, by default, it's set to uh, off and you cannot see all the fields here. Uh, once I set it to on, I can see all the uh, posting setup GL accounts where we have discounts, where we have uh, application entry, etc. And we can see it through here. Uh, this is one among the cool feature I found out uh, in the payment journals. So after making a uh, payment entry through payment journals, uh, you could send a remittance advice uh, and po after posting that entry, you couldn't uh, get back to the remittance advice and regenerate it. So uh, what Business Central April release uh, has done that you can even view this uh, and resend the remittance advice directly from the vendor ledger entries. So this is a payment journal where you can just send the remittance advice and after posting this transaction, you can view it in the vendor ledger entries as well under the functions uh, action group and click on send remittance advice. Uh, this is a good feature, I would say, uh, which is viewing all the prepayment uh, posting invoices and credit memos uh, prior to 
posting it so that you have an idea of what all is uh, what all entries you expect and if things go wrong and where they go wrong you can figure it out so on the sales order page uh, under the posting uh, tab you will be finding a prepayment uh, action group where you can just click on the preview prepayment invoice posting and preview prepayment credit memo posting so based upon that just as you have a preview for any postings you will be able to see all the entries that are present this is a one improved feature of uh, business central april release i would say uh, the three key things here is uh, they have included a reviewing package uh, they have allowed you to create a package of if not from scratch through an excel template that you have okay uh, there are three ways you can create a package so first is through the configuration uh, list page where we have the configuration packages and the list of the packages so directly in the action you have uh, import import excel uh, similarly on the configuration uh, package card page that is the header part you are allowed to import the excel and uh, on the lines which is already present uh, in the list part page so when you're importing it from the list page that is a configuration package list page you need not have to uh, have a configuration package created before you can just click on import select the package and once you select the package it will give you a review box just as i have shown uh, that it, uh, the package does not exist and you will have to create it and it gives you a small note that the data will be overwritten so after i create uh, after I import it, the system will automatically generate the configuration package along with the tables present in the Excel. This is from the configuration package uh, card. So as you can see earlier, the configuration package wasn't present. So in the background, uh, you can see that there is one more uh, configuration package which was created. Once you import from here, all the tables can be set uh directly from the configuration package and reading the excel file it will automatically create the tables and uh, set in the data for you which is to be applied and again uh, business central has added uh, a feature which is to preview the data which was uploaded through the excel uh, and one more actually it's not a part of uh, april release but i would still like to point it out uh, let's say if you are selecting a line and importing a package uh, through configuration package on the uh, lines part page at the bottom on the configuration card page. So I think we lost your volume. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. So on the list part page uh, just as you import from excel if the configuration package is not present it will give you an error saying that the configuration uh, package is not present and we won't be allowing you to create import the excel uh, if the excel is present that which means that you do not have to individually upload all the excels for the particular tables um, you can directly import and it will show it in the review a page that the data will be overwritten and gives you a set of what is it some rules uh, one more thing is reviewing and exporting errors so right now business central uh, is developed where we can review the errors uh, and even export them into excel using uh, edit in excel functionality so prior to uh, applying the data you can even see all the errors that are present in the configuration package uh, one more interesting feature here is the ISO codes uh, attribute for countries and currencies. So for we have basically two formats for countries and regions. And so the first one is ISO 3166 uh, standard numeric, which is three digit and alphanumeric for two digit codes for country and region specific. Uh, and second we have is ISO 4217 standard numeric three digit and alphanumeric three letter codes for currencies. So uh, 
in the current countries and currencies you can uh, you are able to see the iso code and the isonumeric code similarly in the regions as well you are able to see it uh, moving ahead we have changed descriptions on gl entries so uh, after you post the any financial transactions you are able to change the description just for that specific gl entry and uh, you can either modify it you can add uh, more content just a note that just in case if you lost this description so it might cause a problem for you in the future so before editing uh, for the selected row i had credit memo 1014 and after editing i have added this is test credit memo 1014 uh, another cool feature i would say is with related to creating corrective uh, credit memos for the posted sales invoice so when you are creating a uh, credit memo for a posted sales invoice you have to just click on create corrective memo and post it uh, after we have posted it and again we try to create a new credit memo it will just notify you saying that a credit memo is already being created for this uh, do you want to skip do you want to create credit memo or do you want to just see the applied entries this is another cool feature i would say uh, with regards to job queue entries where uh, when you are setting up the recurrence for the job queue you can just mention it as a formula let's say like 2d where uh, you can iterate the job every two days and once you set the next run date formula automatically the recurrence for monday tuesday wednesdays and so on will be uh, move to uh, false that is will be set to off and if you enable uh, any of the recurrence automatically the date formula will be reset to blank uh, this is a helpful feature i would say uh, with regards to the default shipping address so you select the shipping codes uh, on the customer itself and once you are done with that uh, this automatically reflects on your uh, sales documents and even there you can uh, manually add your shipping address or you can even change it from there uh, another feature is adding uh, you can view the attachments uh, related to the invoice so while you're applying the transactions from customer ledger entries uh, you can even view the transaction uh, you can view the attachments for the entries that you are applying to that is the posted sales invoice that you are applying to so this is allowed uh, within multiple ledger entries as well uh, this is one among the asked feature i would say is uh, descriptions for customer vendor and uh, items on the ledger entries so there are three setups here which is inventory setup uh, sales and receivable setup and purchase and payable setups where you can manually uh, tick them on uh, so that the entries uh, the descriptions and the names get appear on the customer ledger entry and item ledger entry as well as vendor ledger entries so let's see for item ledger entries so for item ledger entries we have to go to inventory setup and enable copy item description to entries after that automatically the posted transactions that comes uh, the descriptions will be set over here for sales and receivables similarly we will have to enable copy to customer uh, copy customer name to item leg uh, to ledger entries and after the transaction is posted you will see all the names here note here is that uh, the descriptions for the previously posted transactions where the description checkbox wasn't enabled for those transactions there won't be any uh, customer name or descriptions set so just take care into uh, take that thing into picture similarly for uh, vendor ledger entries in, from purchase and payables and then we can see it here uh, this is i would say one thing that that i feel is important which is the time information for the uh, gl entries which is sorry gl registers item registers which are basically used to check all the data for the batches as well as the source codes
And I think we lost your volume again. Alistair, are you there? Our apologies. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty here. Or maybe he froze up. I will try to reach him. Olister, can you hear us? For those of you on the line, can you raise your hand if you cannot hear him? Okay, thank you, Brooke, for raising your hand. We will see what we can do here. Just one moment. Thank you, Elizabeth, too, for raising your hand. Okay, I will try to reach him. I'm chatting with him, but I don't know if he sees it. It looks, appears it could have froze up. So just one moment. Henry, can you hear me? We can hear you now, yes. Can you go back one screen? Yes, please. Oh, okay. One, one more. So we go will back talk. again. I think you might have froze up. Here? Right there, yes. If you could start there. Thank you. Okay. So the creation time uh, is another field which was added to the registers uh, in the April release. Uh, one more cool feature I would say is uh, the payments fact box here which was created so along with the balances for the vendors and the customers you can see the payment details over here uh, once you click on the payments uh, you will be redirected to the detailed customer ledger entries or vendor ledger entries so automatically you can see all the applied entries as well as the initial entries bulk uh, import item pictures is i would say a brilliant idea because uh, because you can upload all the images uh, in one go you do not have to multi uh, go to multiple items and upload it one by one so all you have to do is uh, rename the images with the uh, the item number and zip them into a folder and upload it uh, through item import item uh, present in the inventory setup itself so after you upload it automatically, it will uh, come as an entry over here. Then is merging duplicate records. So this issue we face uh, mostly during the integrations. Uh, after the integrations fail, for some reason, multiple customers or vendors get created. So now we have a solution here where we can merge multiple records. And uh, all you have to do is merge with, uh, select which customer or vendor you want to merge and select the fields that you want to merge. Uh, after that, the automatically the data is populated into the customer or the vendor. Then is the list view, which is in development. So uh, 
just like lists you have list view where you can filter the data and you are allowed to save the filters as well notes and links is one among the good features of microsoft dynamics nav which was present and since business central uh, we have lost it now microsoft has heard our uh, questions and ideas and they are planning to get it back focus mode i would say is the most wanted feature here uh, because as far as the lines is concerned and the sales order as you can see the screen starts to um, become smaller and smaller as you navigate to multiple uh, places so you lose all your control on the lines because the space gets smaller and smaller so once you click on the button here uh, automatically you will get a full view of the lines so where you can just uh, type in your lines and get the details field and after you're done you you just have to hit the escape key work date indicator uh, this is in development and it is just to give you a reminder that your uh, work date is so and so and you can use it today or turn off the reminder or uh, change to something else so you you can what do you say post your uh, documents appropriately keyboard shortcuts yes this is i would say very helpful feature here which is slimming and uh, widening of the pages so you use control f12 showing and hiding of fact box which is alt f2 and creating of new items is uh, alt n and as always navigating here and there is always made easier now which is control plus left arrow and control plus right arrow respectively auto save indicator yes this is a good feature now uh, you are given your your you can be sure that uh, the record that you are typing into is being saved so this is saved with the auto save so right now we are just in the progress of saving so after you type in your data into the records uh, it takes around like 2 to 3 seconds uh, and business central starts saving the record automatically this is after the record is saved and this is when you get an error or for some reason the record cannot be saved during that time you get this kind of uh, auto save result improved contextual search yes this is added so a few more things here is we can get the app from app source uh, we have few more improvements in the documentation and uh, we have a better view of the list reports as they are being categorized now improved scoring yes this is a very important feature because previously in business central in order to scroll uh, you had to wait uh, until all the records are being populated so you have to wait if let's say you have 1000 records and you have to scroll at the very bottom you'll have to wait until all the records are loaded now uh, we are given the ability to just scroll and for a few seconds you will see a blank screen just have, as i have shown and after a few seconds the data will be populated on the screen simply uh, simplified help and support experiences yes this is uh, being present here and i would say this is a very good feature because uh, another feature i can uh, elaborate on is page inspection where you can uh, which was known as the about this page in microsoft dynamics nav and it's really helpful for developers as well as consultants uh, when you want to check the data into the fields uh, if the fields are not present when you want to know the table numbers the page numbers and in order to debug you need to know the object id so this is added here uh, another very liked feature from my side small improvement here is the sandbox button so once you click on the sandbox it will redirect you to uh, the docs.microsoft.com development in el page uh, this was a feature which was asked by my client and i would say i'm thankful for this feature now uh, because it is present in office 365 it is uh, and we, why can't we have it here so thanks microsoft for this uh, so just as office 365 you can choose the theme as well 
multiple sandboxes. Yes, this is one among the good features where you can create sandboxes with multiple versions just as you like. You can create a production copy into the sandbox as well. And uh, in further presentation uh, slides, I'll show you how you can go to uh, select this uh, sandbox. Then is the designer enhancement. So uh, now you can remove the unnecessary actions and uh, buttons which are present on the page and you can just hide them. Uh, these are two important Visual Studio code uh, enhancements which is supporting larger apps. So along with this we have one more which is uh, without testing without deploying the code uh, which I have not covered here but it's one among the features and second thing is forcing. So after you delete a record a field on the table uh, in Business Central, in order to repopulate the app, you have to change the app ID as well as app names so that you can redeploy it again. Now, all you have to do is just force sync and the schema will synchronize automatically, just like Seaside we have in Navision. Uh, standard web APIs, yes, APIs is moved from, officially moved from beta to API version one. Uh, Microsoft has added a few more uh, APIs as well. And one example is customer ledger entries. Uh, here you have unique keys. So unique keys is basically uh, used for indexing and uh, this specifies that the record should have a unique value other than the primary key as well. Okay. And this helps in SQL querying as well. So we get a better optimized results. Uh, the next one is increased maximum length for text and code fields. So uh, by default, the maximum length is set to 2048. Earlier it was 1024 uh, characters. Odata performance, yes, this, this was actually, I would say a showstopper before for me at least, uh, where I could only fetch 1000 records, but now I am given the ability to fetch 20,000 records. Uh, just as the record, the query record size we set on nav administration, uh, these are the some same parameters which I'm talking about. So right now we have 20,000 as our base now. Latest error, yes. So this is the feature where you can find out uh, the latest error after you logged in into the system. And this can help you debugging because it gives you more context around what the error was. Code action support. Yes, we have a small uh, change. I've uh, actually I have not checked this because uh, I couldn't find it, but it is written down in the documents that it is coming uh, and it will help you to fix errors. And there's a framework around which can help you to fix the problems as soon as possible. Also, it can help you with the refactoring as well. Then is the multiple object ranges. So let's say if you have a parent app and then a child app and then you decide to develop another parent app and the object ranges are being uh, used up by the child app. Now you don't have to manually change all the object ranges for the application app. Uh, you can just include it in your app.json from here. Uh, very important feature here is monitoring and notifications for sandbox. So uh, whenever your tenant is upgrading, you will be emailed to the given email addresses here and uh, you can get your notifications. So every time you log in into Business Central, it will populate that we have, uh, what do you say, we have modified the uh, sandbox and upgraded it to uh, the latest release. Yes, this is important feature with regards to multiple sandbox. So here, uh, on the launch.json, you can set the sandbox name as well. So you can deploy your app specifically to that given sandbox. Uh, this is extension management and where we have a per tenant uh, extension, just like you have multiple uh, sandboxes, you can deploy your per tenant app on just a specific sandbox. Uh, you have the ability to uh, get notified once your uh, app is, let's say, too old for the new system and you will 
get an notification via email uh, on the from the admin center and i guess that's the uh, one good feature i would say so uh, thank you very much for attending the webinar any questions queries There isn't any questions yet typed in the question box. I'm just peeking to see if any hands are raised. So um, if you have a question, please raise your hand. And I did ask a few folks to uh, raise their hand if they couldn't hear you. Um, so if those hands are still raised, just keep in mind here, I'm gonna unmute you. So Robin, do you have a question? I just released those and I released those. After that, that term is done. Yep. Robin, right. I'm going to remute you. Okay, Terry, Terry, your hand is raised. I'm going to unmute you. And Terry, you are self-muted, so I see your hand is raised, but you are self-muted, so you'll have to um, go off mute to yourself. Okay, and then we do have a question in the question box from Greg. Are sandboxes available to on-premise? Um, no, Sandbox is not available to on-premise. Okay, thanks Greg for that question. And Robin and Terry, I know your hands are raised, they might be raised from prior, so type your question in the question box if you have one. We'll just give it another moment here. And thank you so much Olister for sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you, Laurie. Keeping in mind, you can always post your questions out on our community form out on navog.com. So if you think of a question after we get off the line here today, post it out there, or Olister did share his email address. If you want to repeat that one more time to the group. Yes, it's orumao, O-R-U-M-A-O, at the rate cloudfronts.com. Thanks for sharing that and thanks for avail being available to the members. With that, we will end today's session. Thanks everyone for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day and we hope to see you on another webinar real soon. Bye for now.